Okay, so this is a little uh, video I wanted to do. Well, it's not little. This is about 20 minutes. And I want to um, give people an overview of XBMC for Xbox. Now, XBMC for Xbox has been around for a little while. But um, one thing I want to focus on today is the emulation end. We're going to select F FCE first, which is the NES emulator. So the FCE Ultra, actually. We're going to go down and select the game. Um, I've actually got every single official Nintendo and unofficial Nintendo game here, and I'm in the mood for playing a classic. So, let's scroll up and find... Oh, I hate this controller. Tip. Mag-ass controllers, they go bad over time. And, well, I'm using the mag cats because of the fact that this is actually the uh, Xbox I've come up for my nephew. So let's play some Mega Man 2. Starts up just like any other game. Plays perfect. So let's get to our select screen here. And let's try, well, Metal Man first. Thing is, you can also hop out at any point, configure, and change any setting during the game. So, say you're used to different settings. You want to make the analog sticks your D-pad. You want to make the uh, black and white buttons your B and A buttons. Or you want to make them your start and select, or just set up a screen capture. You can do any of that here. And the thing is, most all the emulators... <clears throat> most all the emulators on this... Um, Xbox are set up pretty much the same. They have the same interface, they have the same styling, and pretty much they have the same controls. You can even go in and configure your auto fire config so you can set certain buttons to be uh, rapid fire or whatever. You can make macros, you can make whatever. But, um, yeah, it's all there. So we're gonna hop around here for a minute just to show you. Um, the resolution looks a little bit weird because I um, am using an EasyCap uh, USB video capture device and I'm using Virtual Dub because the software that came with um, my EasyCap kept asking for a uh, registration code that the company never provides. So, and I'm still uh, fooling around with a bit of Virtual Dub here trying to figure out what uh, things use. But anyway, let's get out of that and let's uh, hop into the um, next emulator. So we're going to restart again. And we're going to try Neo Genesis. This is Neo Genesis. This is Sega Genesis, Mega Drive, 32X, and Sega CD emulator all in one. And just to prove it, we're going to play some good old Space Harrier 2. 32X. Actually, not Space Harrier 2, sorry. Space Harrier 32X. As soon as I can find it here. And here we go. This is actually one of my more favorite 32X games. Uh, as it, it, it feels more like the arcade from back in the day. Sounds like it, feels like it, looks like it. I just really think you should be playing this on a cab and, and not on a 32X or on a, uh, or on an emulated system. Well, this is handy too for as well. Some people are, uh, as MN12 or Jake has been showing that some people have been developing 32X um, games independently now. And so you can still play it on a console, not have to attend to computer. Still play it on a good old CRT TV. Or in my case, I have the progressive um, cables for my Xbox. So I'm using component video and put it to my TV at 720p. And you can actually set it to 720p in the emulators, although you're Playing something is not optimized for 720p. So let's hop out of that and let's try out our next emulator now. Next emulator is fun as well. But uh, to prepare you, uh, some of these have the custom music and they really didn't monitor the internal uh, volume on these things. This intro here sounds pretty good. But uh, when we get to the actual interfaces, BGM music, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to want to turn your volume down a notch because... Ugh, so much better. That's the only goof I found with this emulator is the fact that the uh, BGM volume is really bad. But we're going to play some KI right now. 
I know this is a favorite of uh, Mr. Jason Honey, aka the EMU Review, and also of uh, one of the four of the uh, All Gen Gamers, which I'm an avid listener of. I'm gonna warn you now, I stink. I haven't played this in probably over a decade, and um, yeah. <laughs> I'm just I'm just playing this for demonstration purposes, and I don't think I'd ever get a job as a decent game player. But you know what? It's all about what you love. By the way, she had some pointy boobs. You can see I'm very quickly getting my ass handed to me. But just to show you, you can go in any emulator, any of these emulators pretty much, uh, they all have the same stylings, they have the same interface, they have the same flow of uh, navigation. So you can change out pretty much anything you want. And here I noticed that somebody, for some reason, when they developed this emulator, set the right trigger to fast forward. Not realizing this is a Super Nintendo and the right trigger is R. Which really didn't make much sense. I'm guessing the developer for this emulator never really played many games. But yeah, she's totally kicking ass. I didn't think a guy who was on fire could bleed. Why don't you bleed fire? But I digress. Loud! Loud! Anyway, so let's try our next emulator now. Um, the launcher, whenever you select return launcher, always restarts the uh, exit. Um, XBMC for Xbox. Now we're going to try Surreal 64 Triple X B5. Now the thing is, this is the only emulator that doesn't seem to follow the same flow or interface as the um, rest. So I'm wondering right now, sometimes the, lo the uh, ROMs are going to take um, upwards of a couple minutes sometimes to load on the Nintendo 64 emulator, depending on your version and, um, you know, just other factors like that. But the ROM's loaded, and we're going to play some Super Mario 64. It's me, Mario. The thing is, the Xbox's hardware is very good. You can even get PlayStation emulators for this. You can get Neo Geo emulators. You can get Sega Saturn emulators, I believe. There are a wide variety of emulators for uh, the system. I'm just going to show some main console system uh, emulators. Non-disc based. These are all going to be cartridge based. I wonder if cake is code for something. I always wondered that. I think she had a fetish for being captured and tied up and stuff. <laughs> and now, breaking news! Little turtle men who float in clouds, carrying cameras on a fishing pole. Man, the chick's got some spread. I'd say she got it all from investing wisely or a pyramid scheme. So much really looking to her finances. Although, I'd definitely go with more trees. Hey, beats flying. But, yeah, this is a uh, Mario 64 course. I mean, it's been ported to the DS. Uh, I mean, this is Mario's first foray, really, into 3D gaming. But, I mean, there it is. And whenever you want to get into one of these uh, menus in your emulator, all you have to do is press in on the right analog stick. And we're clear of that now. We're going to try another one. And that next emulator is going to be... The X Boy Advance, which is a Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance emulator. So we're going to select. I'm just going to show off a Game Boy game first. I wonder what one I'm going to show. Of course, Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins, was my favorite on the Game Boy when it came to platforming. Really pushed, I found the hardware to the limits graphically and what so forth. I mean, still, yes, it is Game Boy PCM audio. You're not dealing with something that is, like, advanced with a lot of wavetable synthesis and things like that. But, I mean, it is what it is. It's gaming at its simplicity. The graphics look great. 
I'm like down par with um, almost a Super Mario World. Now we're going to try some Game Boy Vance, and we're going to try Super Mario Super Circuit. Now if anybody here has seen some of my previous videos, they've seen my Mario Kart uh, Advance uh, 197 um, quick run of the uh, the Bowser's Castle 3, I believe it is. Yes, here we go. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, I don't do a good job on here because, one, I'm used to playing it on a Game Boy Advance or a PSP. I'm not used to playing it on this hardware. But, I just want to show that, you know, the emulation is there. Looks great. Um, you know, Donkey Kong's a douche, <laughs> as always. But that's Game Boy Advance. It has no issues playing any Game Boy Advance games. Now, um, with the Nintendo 64 games, I have to say, there are certain games that will not play, will play partially, will hang. Some games play perfectly, some games with a slight amount of slowdown. Like I said, this is a, um, this is a um, 733 megahertz, um, uh, PC pretty much. Um, Pentium 3 slash Celeron class processor. Now we're going to try XSMS, also known as the Sega Master System slash Game Gear emulator. Now, for some people who aren't quite as familiar with this, uh, the Game Gear was the direct competition of the Game Boy. Um, its advantage was the fact that it had a color screen and very good color palette. And uh, its downfall was the fact that it had a very bad battery life. Um, I won't really go into too much detail, but, um, you know, it, it was very uh, low in the battery life. And the only problem the Sega Master System had was the fact that Nintendo had such a uh, greater share of the third party support that they had about 85% of the North American market. Uh, the Sega Master System did very well, though, in. Uh, South America, in Europe, and in Japan, also known as the Sega Mark III over there. Here's some Fantasy Star, of course, um, game series very beloved by Mr. John and Millennium. Um, this, I think, is the Japanese version, but you can actually load the FM audio if the game is capable of it. So you didn't have to put up so much of the bleeps and bloops, you actually had an FM audio table to sample from. Um, but as I said, um, the system stopped being produced for North America around, I believe it was 1993, but games are still being produced for the European and Brazilian market up into the first part of the 21st century. But that's the Sega Master System uh, emulator. You know, doesn't you can choose to have the regular 8-bit sound or the FM, which I think is one of the better things because this is the only emulator I've seen console-wise that has done it. Now we're going to go back to the past, to X26X, which is the the best <laughs> system ever which is the Atari 2600 now I have every single game loaded for here um, nothing special is a 2600 emulator one game I have not loaded on here though was Halo 2600 and when I went into the menu um, some of these emulators they'll keep playing their menu BGM music when you go into the game I forgot to unselect that and I'm dead So, um, yeah. <laughs> That's an Atari 2600 emulator. Now, um, there's an overview on emulation. This this is a very good system for emulation, I gotta say. Especially if, say, you got a lot of the older systems, you got some games that are in package, you don't want to break them out or anything like that. And, you know, it's a hassle to have all your games on display or anything like that. Or you want to just have them on display and don't want to take them out and play, you can play on the system and the system is great. But uh, that's all for now. My next video is going to be on the overview for video playback. And here's a quick little preview. We're going to uh, play a uh, DVD-ROM multi-disc that I have done up, which has um, three DivX slash XVID videos. And I'm just going to play a little snippet from uh, Nomium Juliet because I'm throwing the disc in um, with the games on it for uh, with the games on the system, but as well movies on the disc for my nephews. My nephews are uh, the twins are 10 years old, and Dallas is 14 years old, and they're big lovers of like the Disney classics. But playback is great. The interface is great. Looks smooth, and that's video playback. So next video we'll go into depth on this. So um, stay tuned.